Have you ever wondered how it's possible to keep progressing over a period of time? Do you ever wonder if you're training often enough? Do you sometimes think maybe you're overtraining? Well, what I want to do here is share with you the principles behind super compensation and how the body responds to training. So I've put a little presentation together here for you um, and we're going to look at what is super compensation. If you imagine a graph, okay, on one side here, we've got performance. So the higher up that graph, the higher the level of the individual performance. And then across this axis, we've got time. So over a period of months or years, um, we would expect to see, hopefully, a linear rate of improvement. At the moment, it's just an empty graph. Let's add to that graph now, bit by bit, to give you, hopefully, an understanding of how the body responds uh, to training and how it adapts. So let's say this point here where the two axes meet, that's your level of performance right here, right now. You go into the gym and in one session, all you do in training is bust up your body. You don't get strong in the gym. What you do is actually damage the muscle fibers. And it's the ability of you and your body to be able to recover to the demands that you place on it through training, which is going to determine how quickly you recover. So here we go. On this day, your level of performance is here. You train and at the end of that session, you are fatigued because you've trained. Your muscles are bust up because you've trained. And at the end of that session, if you were asked to max out or to push to your absolute limit, you would probably perform slightly worse than when you first went into the gym when you were fresh. So this start of the graph here starts to illustrate the effects on the body and, and how fatigue and, and muscles being broken up uh, affects your level of performance. <clears throat> After training, the aim then is to recover. But what happens is the body actually recovers to a point where it is better, where it is stronger than it was before. So this point here where you finish training, you start to hopefully eat the right foods, um, rehydrate, sleep, massage, stretch. All of the different recovery strategies that you can enforce are done then after training. Your body recovers and it recovers to a point where it was stronger and better than its original performance before. And that is what we're going to call super compensation. That rise above where you were previously. What happens then if you don't train again, if you just rest for several days, a week, maybe let's say you only train once a week. What will happen is your body will return back to where it was originally. No progress has been made. And this type of athlete, you could imagine, would just plateau, wouldn't really show much progression. I put here no training equals back to the same level as at the start. So an athlete here who trains once a week, maybe twice a week, doesn't really get the gains because they're not doing anything with this super compensation. They're just letting their bodies return back to their resting state. Now take a lifter that trains a little bit too early before their body has reached super compensation or before they have fully recovered from training. This lifter, is su this lifter or athlete is super keen and they want to train as hard as they can, push themselves day in, day out. But what they're not doing is allowing their body to recover. So take this illustration here where we come down at the end of a session, we then start to recover. But before the body has fully recovered, this, this athlete will train again. And what happens is we get this negative curve. We get a decline in performance. And this, uh, so training before fully recovered equals a decline in performance. This is what we are going to term overtraining. Over time, this is likely to lead to chronic fatigue and a downward uh, spiral in terms of performance. This is not what we want. Now take an athlete who manages to get their training just right and they train at this point here when they reach their peak in terms of recovery. They train again during that super compensation phase. This way of training is likely to result in an increase in performance. So when they now train again, yes, their body will uh, go down in terms of performance because again at the end of the session they're fatigued but it doesn't drop here as low as it was the first time. Then they recover again and they train again just as they fully recovered and are in this super compensation phase. And again, and we see here a steady increase in performance. That is absolutely what we want. And that is how to train optimally using super compensation to your advantage. So let's look now at this performance over time. The green line is a steady improvement. 
um, and this happens through regular, regular training and optimal recovery. Compare that to the decrease in performance due to not fully recovering between sessions or not, uh, or not training uh, enough. So that's what we've just explained already. Now, in order to get that graph above the line and to show an improvement in performance, you need to make sure that you're doing all the recovery strategies right. Things like eating clean, eating the right foods to fuel the body. If you take a racing car, you're not going to put the cheap, nasty fuel into it because that's not going to get the best results. It's the same with the human body. If you fill it with junk, it's not going to perform optimally. So you need to be eating the right kind of, of clean foods. Sleeping well. I think whether we like it or not, we all understand the importance of sleep. And there's a lot of research that has gone into this. Uh, and, and if you're sleeping well, you're much more likely to recover and therefore perform at a higher level. Hydration. You can monitor that quite easily just by monitoring the colour of urine. It should be clear uh, or pale in colour. Um, that's a good indication as to whether or not you're hydrated. Do you stretch at the end of a session? Uh, that was one of my weaknesses. I know that I didn't put enough time into this side of the recovery. Uh, and I think a lot of lifters or athletes are guilty of neglecting the stretching. Don't necessarily see the importance of it. But if you think of it as a recovery strategy and you factor that into this super compensation and you really want optimal results, then I would try to encourage you to find time to do so. Massage. Finance is dependent. If you can get regular massage, that will help with with recovery as well. Personally, I used to get massage once a week. I was lucky I was a funded athlete and supported so that I could have massage more as prevention from injury rather than waiting to get a niggle or an injury and, and then having treatment. <clears throat> Things to avoid to make sure that you don't have that negative uh, line, as it were, are to understand that more is not always best. Remember, you do not get strong in the gym. What happens is you get stronger through recovery. So if you are not allowing your body to recover, then you're not going to make the progress. So those people that think they're just going to thrash their bodies day in, day out without sufficient uh, consideration for recovery are the ones that are likely to pick up injury or not make the progress that they should. Listen to your body. Yes, we want to push. Yes, we want to work hard. Yes, we want to bust up our muscles in the gym so that we break them down and have the opportunity to rebuild them stronger. But listen to your body. If you're pushing through injury or if, you're, if you know you're not fully recovered because everything feels sluggish, everything um, just feels tired, then you need to factor recovery in, uh, not just between sessions, but even within the weeks of training that we're doing. Not every week of training should look the same. There should be some weeks that are slightly harder, some weeks that are slightly easier, so that you factor in recovery and plan for recovery. If you are planning your recovery, then there's a good chance that you're gonna be doing everything you possibly can. Don't plan, you'll probably end up missing one or two of these things here, um, and that could affect how well you then perform. So that's pretty much it in terms of super compensation. I hope that that has given you an understanding of how the body responds to training, what you should do at the right times. Now, the one question I always get asked is, when is that point of super compensation? When should I do the second session again? And unfortunately, I can't give you that answer. I can't give you that answer because it depends very much on the individual. It depends on the uh, the amount of training they've already been predisposed to. It depends on their tolerance to training and tolerance to volumes. Uh, and all of those things can be built. So where somebody might only train a couple of times a week originally and show good improvement, as their body adapts and gets used to it, they might need to up that to three sessions or four sessions. You might well get to a point where you can train every day or every maybe four or five, six days a week. When I was training at my best and I was showing improvement, I was training between eight and 12 sessions a week. But don't get me wrong, they weren't all really hard, intense sessions. Some of those sessions would have been recovery sessions where I would spend time stretching, where I would spend time maybe doing some uh, low intensity or low volume work, but I would still be getting a good volume of training in. But there would definitely be factored hard days and easier days into a week's training. I hope you've enjoyed this video or this blog, depending on how you're watching or reading it.